Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Manx, and you know what time it is. We got things to say, places to be, and announcements to announce. So kick back, relax, and make yourselves comfortable. In today's news and updates segment, I am actually going to be talking a little bit about my channel and the future of it. I get a ton of questions about what Let's Plays I'm going to revive, what I might do in the future, and a lot of other things like that, so I thought I'd clarify my current plans in this segment. Of course, before I begin, I would just like to say that not everything is set in stone. Things are always subject to change, and unexpected occurrences could always get in the way. But as it is now, these are my current plans and goals for the channel's future. First of all, I'd like to start off the segment by saying that I got contacted by one of my subscribers who hooked me up with a 3DS capture card. We are still working out some of the details and there are some issues that need resolving before I can get my hands on it, but as things stand right now, it looks very likely that I will get it very soon. This means that I will be able to let's play Fire Emblem Fates on my channel when it comes out. My goal is to have the very first episode of the Let's Play come out the same day Fates gets released. I will be playing the Path of Nor, as I personally think it looks much more interesting, and the difficulty will most likely be hard on Classic mode, if it is anything like the hard difficulty from Awakening. You can expect this Let's Play to be of a very high quality, as a capture card produces much better video and sound compared to an emulator. If shit hits the fan and I somehow do not get my hands on the capture card, I have ordered a second one as a backup plan, but it won't arrive until at least around May or June, so that just means my Fate Let's Play will be delayed by a few months. When Fates eventually comes around, be it early or late, most other Let's Plays on my channel will probably come to a halt, as I will be focusing mainly on completing that game first. That doesn't mean there won't be other videos, just that there will be a lot less of them, so you can't for example expect daily episodes of other Let's Plays. Seeing as Fates is still months away, however, my current goal is to finish my Fire Emblem 6 randomized Let's Play, which is very soon complete. After that, I will revive my Fire Emblem 4 substitute run, as well as my Fire Emblem 12 Let's Play. Once those are complete, I may or may not finish my Pokemon Nuzlocke run, or start a new randomized Fire Emblem Let's Play. Right now, I still haven't decided if I want to go Blazing Sword or Sacred Stones, though I know a lot of people want to see me play randomized Sacred Stones with monster classes and increased enemy growth rates. Midnight Sun was supposed to come out this month, but as I feared, it has been delayed, and Alfred Kamen has not yet been able to tell us when the final patch will be released. By the looks of things, it sounds like it actually could quite be some time, which saddens me greatly, but that's just how things are in the hacking community. Limited manpower behind the hacks themselves, combined with the fact that these guys essentially develop their games for free, and other things taking up their free time, like work and studies, mean that sometimes the developments of these new hacks happen very slowly. When it eventually comes out, however, Midnight Sun will be very high up on my priority lists. Other Let's Plays that I very much plan on doing in the future will be an Awakening Let's Play, as well as a Dual Strike Let's Play, both using my new capture card. While these are games that I have slandered pretty heavily and expressed a strong dislike for in the past, it is not because I hate or despise them, but only because I expected so much more. I have invested a considerable amount of hours into both these games, and they are part of a series I consider myself a die-hard fan of, so it's an absolute travesty not to feature them on my channel. XCOM 2 is also fast approaching sometime after the new year, and I will definitely start a let's play of that as well, though I will prioritize Fates when it comes out. Depending on how good XCOM 2 is and on the response I get, I might decide to make multiple let's plays as I have with XCOM Enemy Unknown and Enemy Within. 
As far as Civilization V goes, I don't have any immediate plans at the moment for any new Let's Plays. I am a little bit tired of the game and I need a short break. There are plenty of awesome mods I'd like to check out, but my computer isn't strong enough to run some of the coolest ones without issues, so my Civilization series will come to a brief halt. I am by no means done with the game, however. Sometime in the near future you might very well see a new Let's Play pop up in your inbox. And of course, everyone is asking about Cyril. Cyril, Cyril, Cyril. Don't worry guys, he hasn't gone anywhere and he isn't going anywhere. He is my friend and I talk to him on a regular basis. We recently did some collab StarCraft 2 videos together, and while we don't have any huge projects planned, you can probably expect to see him visit the channel sometime in the future. So calm your tits, Cyril fanboys, your prayers will be heard. Aside from that, you can expect more Fire Emblem character spotlights and more Mang's Mondays. I'd like to repeat that this schedule is subject to change, so don't get your panties in a bunch if a promised Let's Play doesn't show up, or if I suddenly decide to start on something brand new. However, as it stands right now, this is my short-term plan for the channel's future, and I hope you guys will like it. If you have any games you'd like to see me play in the future, remember that the mail segment of Mang's Monday is a very good place for suggestions. In today's featured Let's Play, I will be showcasing one of my Let's Plays again. This is because this is one that I will be reviving very soon. A lot of you guys probably remember it well, and have probably watched it too, but I have gained a considerable amount of subscribers since the series came to a halt, and I think it's a good idea to introduce some of my newer watchers to the concept. I am of course talking about my Fire Emblem 4 substitute run. In short, my substitute run is a playthrough of the second generation of Fire Emblem 4, where I only utilize the substitute children, which are the ones you get if you don't pair anyone up in the first generation. The substitute children are a lot weaker and most of them lacks any holy blood whatsoever, which makes the second generation considerably harder. To further increase the difficulty, I have also banished any characters with major holy blood, with the exception of Selyse. When the last part of the Substitute run was released, I was currently halfway through Chapter 10, which means that there is not that many parts left, but it is still something that I think many of you will be looking forward to, as Fire Emblem 4 is a game I've yet to fully complete on the channel. I do not yet know if the translation patch from the Book of Holseti will be done in time for the last part, but if it isn't out yet, I will probably just manually translate the ending myself post-production. It may not be as epic, but it will at least be something, so you can look forward to that. As always, you can find the link to the playlist of the Substitute Run in the video description, so if you haven't watched it yet, you have some time to catch up before I revive it. Then we come to the comment of the week, and while this initial comment made by Jacob Calterbank made me associate blowjobs with flack thanks to his comment, barbaric blowjob strikes again, which definitely did not make me very happy, Carl the Cool came along and saved the comment section with this amazing line. Pretty accurate, a blowjob that's randomly either really good or really bad, but at the end of the day, Nell does the best. Now, I am associating blowjobs with Nell, and my mind is once again at ease. Thank you, Carl, you're a cool guy. And then it's time to feature a babe of the week. I actually read some comments from people worrying that I might run out of babes at some points, but looking at the roster of Fire Emblem Fates, I'm pretty sure the developers of Fire Emblem are well able to produce new babes faster than I can showcase them, so we're not in danger of running out anytime soon. This week, we will take a look at someone which is actually not very high up on my personal lists, but this chick is just freaking worshipped in the Fire Emblem community these days, and that is Cordelia from Fire Emblem Awakening. While her personality is a little bit meh, I think people in the Fire Emblem community simply just pass a thing for redheads because they really can't seem to get enough of this Pegasus Knights. I do agree that Cordelia is quite a treat to the eye. Her hairstyle is very sexy, and of course, being a Pegasus Knight, she has those long, amazing legs that she of course shows off in a short skirt and stockings because, you know, that's just practical and all on the battlefield. 
It is revealed through the Summer Scramble DLC that Cordelia is actually quite ashamed of her small busts, and prefers to keep her breastplate on to hide this fact. But her fans certainly don't seem to mind, and honestly, who cares about a small bust when you have an ass like that? I mean, even myself, who really has a thing for busty chicks, still would marry a girl with Cordelia's features in a heartbeat. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, and then it's time to read the mail. And our first mail comes in from the one and only TC. I'm surprised he even knows how to write, but apparently he does, so let's take a look at what he has to say. Hi, it's me, TC, and I don't give a shit about grammar. Yeah, we already know that. Uh, I am already a long time on your channel, and I love nearly all of your Let's Plays except for Fire Emblem 8 because it's crap, not because of you. Yeah, I kinda agree. I think you're the best YouTuber ever and deserve more fame than guys like PewDiePie, or whoever the fuck he's called. <laughs> it's PewDiePie, TC. I have some questions to ask, so I hope you answer them all. Alright, here we go. That's a fuckload of questions. One. Will there ever be the Dorothy Let's Play? No. Uh, two. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about the vigilante crisis? You don't have to answer this. As I read about this in the newspaper, it's some people putting on masks running around shooting people uh, in some city that I don't even remember what's called. I don't know. I don't really pay it any mind, really. It's just another day in our fucked up world. People shooting people, people being crazy. I mean, I'm kind of surprised this hasn't popped up earlier with all the superhero movies and shits. And, like, why hasn't people started putting on masks and running around being heroes? I guess they aren't really heroes, they're vigilantes, because they are, from what I understand, they're also shooting at the police, so they seem a little bit crazy, these people, so, I don't know. It's just more crazy people, I guess. The world is full of them. Number three, would you legalize weed? Uh, yes. I see absolutely no reason why weed should be illegal. People smoking weed doesn't hurt, okay, they don't hurt anyone except for themselves. Um, I think you should legalize all drugs. I mean, if someone wants to go and do drugs and destroy their life, then, then they, they should be able to do that, and... There are also plenty of drugs you can take that do not destroy your life. Uh, there are a lot of drugs that are not addictive, like some people think. Some there's, there's some pretty nasty shit out there, like heroin and cocaine, that can really fuck you up. But again, if, if someone wants to go and destroy their own life, then I don't see why they should be put in jail for doing that. I mean, as long as you're not hurting other people, I don't think you deserve to be locked away. Um, I mean, shouldn't our jails be used to house murderers, rapists, and people that hurt other people? I mean, why lock away people that are no threat to anyone? Besides, if you legalize all the drugs, you'd pretty much take the business part out of it because there will be no need for dealers, no need for cartels, no need for police. Uh, or police police forces could be used elsewhere than trying to, you know, capture people with drugs. Um, the the so-called war on drugs is just sapping money out of the economy and it's not doing shit. Uh, ever since the so-called war on drugs started, drugs have just gotten more profitable, and that's kind of what happens when you legal uh, or when you illegalize something. I mean, I'm not sure if you guys uh, did your history um, back in school, but uh, at some point, I think during the 1920s, alcohol was actually illegal, and uh, they actually had to lift uh, lift uh, the restriction. Or take away the law entirely because people started selling alcohol and it became like a fucking profitable business. So the, the the crime lords just started dealing in alcohol and they just realized that hey, we have to kind of legalize alcohol or else people are just gonna <laughs> fucking become rich uh, by profiting of it. So, and and really, if if people are like, this is a this is an opinion I have and. I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys share this opinion with me, at least I think so. My generation seem to be pretty much agreeing on this. The people who make these laws, they don't give a shit about our health, because if they did, why are two of the biggest drugs in the world, that is alcohol and tobacco, also uh, the ones that kill the most people? I mean, how many people have died because of marijuana? How many people have died because of weed? Like, <laughs> almost nobody. Uh, yeah, drugs can ruin lives, I'm not saying they can't, and drugs can be terrible if used by the wrong people. But I also think that if you want to go and use drugs, then that's your your choice, your body, you know? And you shouldn't be locked away for that. Anyway, that's uh, enough about that, let's continue. Four, Nor or Hoshido? Uh, Nor sounds a lot more fun, not only because of Camilla's boobs, but the from what they're saying, Hoshida's gonna be like the casual easy mode route, whereas Nora's gonna be a lot more tight and a lot more strategic, and that sounds a lot more fun for an advanced Fire Emblem player, such as myself. Alright, anyway, 
Number five, will you do some multiplayer Civ 5 with Cerule? Uh, no, because Cerule doesn't like Civ 5. I've tried to make him like it, but every time we play it, he hates it. Six, what do you think is the worst game ever you have ever played and which is the best? Uh, I don't know, dude. I don't remember the horrible ones. I don't play horrible games, and I don't like to tear games to pieces on this channel. There are some people who find that extremely amusing, but I, I really don't. Um, the best game I've played is Planscape Torment. I was asked that last week, if you read the mail segment. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah, which was your... Number seven, which was your favorite school subject? Uh, I was big on history. I really loved history. And on high, uh, during high school, I also had psychology, which I was also a very big fan of. I can't really pick between the two. I loved history, I loved psychology. Um, number eight, what is worse, people who always complain or those gentleman guys? <laughs> um, by gentlemen, I like that's a pretty big category there, TC. I, I don't think you can like you can you can't just summarize everyone into the gentleman category. But if I if I'm thinking what you're thinking here, you're probably referring to those white knights, the people in their fedoras who are like arguing and defending other people on the internet and kind of being all obnoxious. Yeah, they are pretty fucking annoying, but just like everyone else on the internet that sucks, you kind of just have to ignore them. Nine, do you have a PS4 or do you think about getting one? Probably not. My friend is gonna getting one. If I have any games I wanna play, I'm probably just gonna play them over at his house. I don't have that much money. If you wanna buy me one, then feel free to send it to me. Anyway, uh, number 10, will Ente ever come back for the LP? I'm supposed to, I suppose you're referring to Mr. Ente Nan. Yeah, he might. Number 11, when will you continue your the Mangslug Pokemon run with the best Lapras ever? Me. Uh, when I am done with Fire Emblem 4 and Fire Emblem uh, 12, then I am fi I'm gonna go back to my Nuzlocke run and I'm gonna finish that. You're one of the biggest fans, TC. Well, that was a, that was a fun mail, TC. I <laughs> hope you enjoyed it. Alright, so the next email comes in from a guy named Darian, and he says, Hey, Mangs! Oh, hello there. I want to start off by thanking you for the amazing content you release daily and the laughs that you give me and my girlfriend when we watch you together. <laughs> really? You watch my videos when you're together with your girlfriend? <laughs> do you have anything better to do? Ah, I guess that sounds that sounds nice. Anyway, I found you out through Mark and Joe in one old Rage Fred submission. You co-voiced with him, and since then it's been a blast. I have a few short questions for you. Bring him on, buddy. Alright, one, have you ever shown what you look like? Judging by that sexy voice of yours, I'm sure you are a lady killer. Well, I don't really kill them. I prefer to have sex with them. But yeah, I did a face cam a little, a little while back, a Q&A face cam, actually. Uh, but I was very sick in that video, so I looked like shit. Uh, the, the face cam, or the camera that I used to record, was also pretty bad, so <laughs> I didn't exactly look at my, look my best during that Q&A. But I guess I can post a picture. This is what I look like. Yeah, this picture was taken in Japan. Uh, I got yelled at by a monk after taking it, because apparently the statue I'm posing next to is some sort of uh, deity or something in Japan, and yeah, I apparently disrespected it quite a bit by doing that pose. Uh, but I kept the picture, though, because <laughs> I liked it. Anyway, two, have you ever thought of doing something similar to Marky Joe, like Rage Fest submissions? I have, and Marky Joe certainly seems keen on the idea. Uh, he kept telling me when I co-voiced with him that I should do my own Rage Fest, so at least I guess I have his endorsement if I want to do it. Um, I think, like, I, I enjoy the concept of Rage Fests, but I don't understand how he has the patience to play through them all. I would get really fucking tired. I mean, I, I like, I tried to do the Advanced Wars, um, uh, fan submissions, or whatever they called, uh, where I had my fans create Advanced Wars maps for me to beat. And the reason why that series didn't work out because I, was because I got so much garbage from my fans. Like, like I'm not gonna lie, like maybe one or two of those maps were actually enjoyable to play. The rest were complete trash because... I mean, I guess I don't have that many talented map designers among my Advanced Wars 2 fanbase, and I can't really blame them for that, but I quickly realized that I would have really big difficulties going through with this series, because I would have to filter out so much bad stuff. Um, as far as making rage fests, I, I like the thing about rage fests is that you have to be a really big and possibly old school Marky Joe fan to really enjoy them, because they contain a lot of internal and inside humor. 
Uh, and I guess I would kind of enjoy that as well, like if someone made like a barred train hack where, <laughs> you know, I, I have quite a few inside jokes on my channel as well that I think my fans would, would like. Um, so maybe, uh, it's not on the top of my to-do list right now, I have a lot of other things that I want to do. But I'll definitely look into it one day, I guess. Maybe when the new hacking platform comes, I can't remember its names, but it, there's there's something coming up that will make it significantly easier to make Fire Emblem hacks that are being worked on. And once that comes around, a lot of people will be able to make maps and such. And uh, I think I would be interested in seeing what my subscribers could conjure up with that. Anyway, Tree, uh, you ever want to play Indeedee? Because I noticed... Because I noticed you only play on Immortal, also, what if you did sub-games where you played multiplayer Civ with some few selected subs? I think that would be really fun, considering I'm an avid DD player myself, and getting a domination victory on you would be really fun. Uh, I do play on DD. I have several Civilization games on DD. I mean, just look them up in the playlists. I have DD next to them, the ones that I play DD. I played Poland on DD, I played the Sulus on DD. I'm pretty sure, and I played uh, China on DD. Uh, so I have a lot of DD games on my channel. Uh, but I usually tend to lose them because I'm not that good. Uh, and I just. Re <laughs> the problem I have with Didi is that if you're unlucky, you can lose a game even if you play perfectly. Because you could have like Gandhi spawn on the opposite side of the world and he could just fucking win a culture victory at turn 280 and <laughs> there's nothing you can do to stop him. That thing. That kind of sucks sometimes. And it kind of makes Didi a little bit annoying to play. Whereas on Immortal, I feel like I have a good chance of winning every game if I play very well. The AI doesn't, like, skyrocket out of control as easily. Um, I would actually really like a difficulty between Didi and, and Immortal. Like, Demigod or something. That would be really sweet. Because I feel like Immortal is a little bit too easy, but Didi is a little bit too hard. Anyway, um, as for playing multiplayer Civ with my subs, it's a good idea. The only problem is that... Um, I would have to set aside a whole day for that, because, as you may know, a quick game of Civ, even between two players, can take up to like four or five hours. With three or four people? Oh god, that could take an entire day. I would have to make sure that these players, like, wouldn't leave, because that would destroy the whole game, and also the skill, the skill difference would be insane. I mean, I don't even know, like, there could be like two horribly bad people, and there could be like a DD player such as yourself just steamrolling the game. I also have a general dislike for multiplayer Civilization V because playing against humans... I mean, humans, they play to win and they do things like they steal your workers, they, they, they harass you, they go to war just to do just to pillage a mine. Stuff like that kind of ruins Civilization for me a little bit because I really enjoy the di diplomacy aspect of it, building an alliance, trading, uh, you know, using the modifiers, bribing others into declaring wars. This is what I enjoy about Civ, the World Congress, for example, that's a lot of fun. And playing Civilization with other humans just completely destroys them. Um, not to mention, if one of the human players leave, and there's a stupid AI left behind that everyone just abuses to hell by trading with it and declaring war and trading with it and declaring war and stuff like, stuff like that. Ah, uh, and those bloody simultaneous uh, turns. I mean, you can turn them off, but it takes for fucking ever, because everyone has to do their turns, but in combat, everyone just fucking moved, moves their unit at the same time, and it just becomes a spam fest of who can click the units the fastest, and I really dislike that. I feel, like, obligated to just move my units fast, and there's no thought or strategy gone into it. So yeah, that's, that's my that's my, that's my reason behind it anyway. Anyway, thanks, Manx, you're awesome. Yeah, so are you, and your girlfriend too, I guess. Say hello from me. And, yeah. Alright, so the next mail comes in from a guy named Let's Quest, and he says, Warning, my grammar is shit, so expect shit grammar. Alright, I will. I am expecting it. Hi, Mangs, I am Chubby. Well, you better lose some weight then. Let's Quest on YouTube, because that's his channel, I take it. I have been subbed since your Radiant Dawn Let's Play, currently playing the game myself, and I enjoy your content, and I have a few questions. One, are Jesus or are and goddess Anna? Who is better? Uh, I don't know. I guess Anna, I suppose. I don't know an R and Jesus unless you're referring to the Jesus. Still, Anna is a lot better and hotter. Two, who is your favorite girl in Awakening? Uh, who is my favorite girl in Awakening? I guess Tiki. Yeah, Tiki. I like Tiki a lot. She has big boobs. Three, who is your favorite Fire Emblem ship? Uh, I really like the ship that Fargus sails on. That's a cool one. <laughs> I know I know what you meant. You, you're talking about my shipping, right? I don't ship. 
I don't. I, it's a thing that I don't understand about the community. I don't ship anyone. I don't give a shit who people support their characters with. I, I guess there are some stories that make a lot more sense than others. I was a big fan of Lynn and Hector when I first played Fire Emblem 7. I thought that they got along well. Aside from that, I, I, <laughs> I don't really get it. I don't ship people. I'm sorry. Luis and myself, maybe? Was that a real answer? Anyway. Also, I was doing a very bad and shitty Let's Play of Fire Emblem 6, but I temporarily rage quits. Uh, but your randomized Fire Emblem 6 Let's Play made me want to continue, so thanks for that. Now, YouTube has more terrible... Terrabel channel. Oh, great. Thanks for reading this, and may that bard and dancer give them some respect. Train, be with you. Ah, thanks, dude. Alright, so, it's time for another mail, and this one comes in from Feral... Feral Karras? Feral Karras? I don't know how to pronounce your name, dude. He says, Dear Mangs, I discovered your channel when you were a guest in one of Marky Joe's Ragefest 4 videos. Oh, another one. Cool. I like your Fire Emblem content, and you also got me into the Wars series. You're the only channel I'm subscribed to, other than Game Grumps, that consistently puts out contents. I like seeing the new Fire Emblem randomizer video every morning, and I like that you respond to your fans. It's a real shame that there aren't more Fire Emblem channels like yours. I have a lot of questions in mind, but I'll try not to bombard you with too many of them, so here they are. 1. Would you ever Let's Play Famicom Wars or Fire Emblem 1 on your channel? I don't know why. But I really like these games despite their flaws. It's probably because they're 8-bit. Well, dude, why don't you go through my playlist before you ask that? I have a Let's Play of Fire Emblem 1, and it's finished. It was actually one of the first ones I did. I'll even... Like, I can throw a link to it in the video description, but if you just click um, playlists on my channel, you will see all the games that I've played, and Fire Emblem 1 should be pretty close to the bottom since it's one of the first games I did. But yeah, it's it's fully complete, so go watch it. As far as Famicom Wars, uh, I have considered doing like a one-part Let's Play of that, because it's there, there's really nothing special about that game. It's kind of like Super Famicom Wars, but with a lot of elements removed. You don't have COs, or you have two COs, I think, and you have less units and less maps, and it's a lot more clunky. Aside from that, it's the exact same game. But I might make a video just because... You know, it's fun to see it, I guess. I have the I have the emulator and I have the ROM, so I could make it right now if I wanted to. I just have to get around to it. Anyway, number two. What do you think of the Vestari Vestaria Saga, and would you ever play it? Um, I actually have never heard of Vestaria Saga. So, no, I can't really say anything. I'm sorry. <laughs> don't know what that is. Anyway, number three. What is your opinion on Leaf from the Jug Draw games overall? Uh, he's okay as far as a uh, protagonist goes, but there's really nothing about him that sticks out. He is very similar to Roy and Celise in the fact that he is the protagonist that does what is right and is very neutral and bland and, you know, s says the right things. Um, so uh, as far as his personality, there's not really a lot to say, is there? I mean, does he have any remarkable features that sticks out from any of the other Average Lords? I don't think so. As far as the units, I think he's cool in Fire Emblem 4. He is a very cool unit, especially when he becomes a Master Knight. He really wrecks face. Uh, in Fire Emblem 5, he's well, not fantastic, but alright, I guess. That's really about it. He's, he's meh. He's like average, I suppose. This is the first email I've ever written, and I feel like it was worth it. I really hope for more Advanced Wars videos, and I would really like to see a character spotlight for Leafis from Fire Emblem 5. Oh, uh, that would be cool, actually. I really liked Leafis. I could definitely see myself doing a spotlight on him. So, yeah, that's, um, that's, uh, challenge accepted. Anyway, anyway, I hope that you keep making awesomeness. Fyral, Fyral Karras. Thank you, Fyral Karras. I will try. Alright, so this next mail comes in from Thomas Ansel, and he says, Well met, Manx. I first found your channel when searching for help regarding Advanced Wars, and your Let's Play of the first Advanced Wars campaign got me interested. I really enjoy your content, every video I've watched, whether it's Fire Emblem, Advanced Wars, or Civilization, or anything else you put out. It always makes me laugh and helps me cheer up whenever I've had a bad day. Thanks to you, I found Fire Emblem, and I've really been enjoying playing it and watching you Let's Play it. If you would be so kind, I have a few questions. Alright. Number one, if you ever made a Fire Emblem hack, or if someone else made a hack and made you as the main character, what unique class would you give yourself? What sort of personality would you want to have, and what you, would you be doing? Well, 
I tell you what I, I, I'd be doing, I'd be telling them not to, because I don't want to be a main character in a hack. I don't think, like, that would be a good thing, because you very much run into the risk of the Mary Sue syndrome and all that good shits. I mean, Mage Knight did it back when he was younger, and uh, look how well that was uh, received by the community. So no, I, I wouldn't want that. It, like, if you really want to put Manx or the character Manx in a hack, then I would accept being a minor boss. Like, not a main villain, not a big important character, just a boss. A boss in a chapter. Uh, and I would love to be a paladin or, best of all, a duke knight, if those are in your hacks. Uh, and just have me be an, an evil bastard, a very arrogant evil paladin that has a few lines of dialogue, is very, like, condescending and talks down to everyone and... You kill me off and you move on, when you don't really mention my character ever again. And and I, that would be a very, very nice uh, inclusion into a hack. I would, I would really like to see that, but that is it. If someone tried to make me a main character of their hack, I would not endorse it. I would tell them that I personally wouldn't want it. I couldn't stop them, because I haven't really trademarked the name Manx, so they're free to do it, but... I personally would not want to do it, and I would kind of be a little bit annoyed if that happened, and now saying that, someone will probably do it just to piss me off, which would, again, kind of be fun, so it's fine. Anyway, I... Number two, have you ever considered interacting with your subscribers slash viewers on an occasional series, uh, voice chat or play game on Steam or other things? No. And the reason why is because I'm very stingy with who I bring onto the channel. The only time I've ever really brought a subscriber onto a Let's Play is with Mr. Antinen at the start of the Radiant Dawn Let's Play, and that worked because he was outspoken and had a very good uh, microphone. Uh, of course, it wasn't perfect. He did talk a lot over me. Uh, our chemistry was th wasn't the best, but it was okay. And I do like that. I do like to think that the first seven or eight episodes, I think it was seven, before Ray uh, joined in, was quite entertaining. And I do believe a lot of people really liked the combination of me and Mr. Antonin. But uh, aside from that, no, I, I wouldn't want to bring viewers onto here occasionally. The truth of the matter is, and this is like the hard truth, I guess, is that most people are not fit to make Let's Plays. Most people aren't outspoken, they're not fun to listen to, and they, and, <laughs> and least of all, or, or most important of all, is that most people don't really have good microphones. They, they use crappy headsets and their voices sound weird. And I would have to tell a lot of players that they aren't good enough if I were to make such a series, because I would have to call them up and listen to their voice and, you know, judge whether or not I want to do a Let's Play with them. And I, and I would have to say, like, okay, I don't think this is going to work. And I think that would hurt a lot of people. And I don't think I would like doing that. Besides, I am a solo commentator. I don't actually play that well with others. I like it to do it occasionally, but most of the time I just really like to run my own show. Anyway, uh, number three. You've been doing YouTube for quite a while. What tips could you give to an aspiring or wannabe YouTuber? Well, first of all, go buy yourself a good microphone. And make sure you use a good recording program. And uh, make sure that you are an entertaining personality. Uh, if you're not an entertaining personality, you probably shouldn't do Let's Plays. Truth of the matter is, as I said, just said, most players or most people aren't good Let's Players. That's just... I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying I'm the best. I'm not saying that I'm like super entertaining. But I like to like to believe that I am slightly more entertaining than the average person. And that's why I've almost gotten up to 5,000 subscribers. Um, but I am by no means like the epitome of Let's Playing <laughs> or, or a Let's Player. Absolutely not. But yeah, just make sure you have your microphone in order. I think that's the most important uh, part. Because if someone, is, if I click a Let's Play and the first thing I hear is... Welcome to Silent. So it's like, no, no, I don't I don't give a shit how entertaining you are. I don't give a shit what you're playing. I'm not going to watch that. I'm not going to watch... I'm not going to listen to that. I'm sorry. If your sound quality is bad, then I won't watch your video. So, yeah, aside from, aside from that, just make sure you work on your personality a little bit. Try to be entertaining. It is a skill you can learn. You just need to talk. And, 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 and perhaps the most important thing you do as a Let's Player is talk shit. Like... There won't always be, like, you can always commentate on the game and you can talk about the game, but there will be times where the game isn't worth commentating. And if you if you don't have anything interesting to say and there's just a lot of silence, then that becomes awkward. You have to talk all the time. Make sure you're always talking about something. And, you know, if, you, if, it's, if, if the time or setting is right, tell a story or talk about something. But don't go completely off-topic. If you go too off-topic and you lose 
focus on the game, that can also be very annoying, and people won't necessarily like that. Um, I, I watched a, a, someone stream Fire Emblem uh, 6 once, and throughout the entire chapter they were just talking about another game. They weren't even talking about, and, and that kind of gets me a little bit pissed off, because like, yeah, sure, I mean, you you like that game, but now you're playing Fire Emblem. You, now, I think you should talk about Fire Emblem when you play Fire Emblem. Not all the time, you can talk about other things as well, but like, have some attention on the game. If you want me to focus on the game, then you should at least focus on the game too. But yeah, at the end of the day, I think you just need to realize that not everyone can become Let's Players, or everyone can become Let's Players, but not everyone can become good Let's Players. And if you're not an entertaining personality with a lot of energy, your videos aren't going to be that enjoyable to watch. And I think my, my advice to you, if you're not an entertaining personality, and I think this is something that you should try to realize, uh, and if you don't have any, like, <laughs> if, if you don't have any self-realization, then this is going to be hard for you, but if you are a boring person, then at least make sure the content you create is original and that, that it can't be found anywhere else. If there is a game you know that you could Let's Play that there isn't a Let's Play of on YouTube, then you, you should consider doing that. Whereas the more entertaining you are, the more mainstream games you can play and be successful. Because, if, for example, if I were to try and play Minecraft, which is one of the most popular games on YouTube these days, or Call of Duty, I would be competing with a lot of big names that are way more entertaining and way better than me. Uh, so I wouldn't really do well. But the reason I think why this channel has started growing is because I am pretty much one of the only ones doing Fire Emblem and Advanced Wars videos on YouTube. Like, I'm not the only one, there's other Let's Players as well, but I am one of the biggest Let's Players of Fire Emblem and Advanced Wars. And that means that everyone who searches for those games comes to my channel. So try to find something that is original that only your channel has, and that could help you a great deal. And if people are very interested in watching that game, maybe it's a game from their childhood that they can't get anymore, if you have something like that, that'd be really good, then they would, um... They would come to your channel regardless of whether or not your commentary sucks. So, yeah, that's a good tip. Anyway, I, I should be moving on. Four, uh, you've been doing a randomized Fire Emblem 6 Let's Play, but um, did you think about having a save state at the beginning? Surely your channel cannot be attacked for linking people to a save file. Uh, no, but the save state won't do shit for you because you need the ROM. If I, if I just give you the save state and you try to load that save state in a normal emulator... Uh, I <laughs> I think the game just crashes, or it's not going to work very well. You need the actual ROM itself, and that I will not link, because if... It, I'm very careful right now with shit like that, because Fates is coming out, and when Fates comes out, Nintendo might start their bullshit behavior again, and they might start doing... Um, they might start going after Fire Emblem content, and if they find ROMs on videos... I mean, I, my channel could get taken down permanently, and I don't want that. So yeah, anyway... Stay awesome, man. So remember, if you Louise ever dumps Pent, I'm sure she will go for you. Oh, and make be sure to keep an eye on Sarah. You will understand why she's jealous that you prefer Louise. What? This guy is fucking weird. Kind regards. Yep, goodbye. So the last mail of today comes in from Jason Fails, and he says, Hi Mangs, I've been a big but somewhat quiet fan of your channel for a few months now. I decided to check out your channel after watching one of Marky Joe 1990s videos, in which he mentioned you. Since uh, that day, I have probably watched close to 20, maybe even 30 hours of content from your channel. Everything from Fire Emblem to XCOM and Advanced Wars I have been watching, and I plan to start watching some of your Civ 5 content soon as well. Anyway, enough of the fanboyism, and on to the questions. Before answering the questions, I would just like to see that I'm getting a lot of subscribers from Marky Joe's channel and I can I, I because of the way YouTube works I, I can actually see where my subscribers are coming from and uh, I can see that a lot of them are being directed from his channel over to mine so I'm really grateful for that I just hope that I that I that I'm not stealing his views because that would make me feel very bad anyway um, here's the question so number one was what was the first turn-based strategy slash strategy rpg you ever played that was lords of magic uh, a game that i talked about i think two weeks ago on the mail segments lords of magic was the first game i ever played i got it from my grandmother for christmas and i played the absolute shit out of it i i wore out the cd i had to go buy a new one because it was basically cracked up from overuse uh, and I think, like, while that game wasn't particularly good, it was very difficult and very punishing. And I think that Lords of Magic really set the mood for 
basically how I develop my taste in games because yeah, Lords of Magic it was very slow, very clunky and, and pretty like unbalanced, but it was so fucking difficult. Uh, you would like your units would permanently die if you didn't play perfectly and it, the game was just really fucking hard. I mean, if I go back and play it today, I probably wouldn't have any issues with it, but when I was a kid, that was a big challenge for me. And ever since I played that game, I've been into turn-based strategy games, and I've been into difficult turn-based strategy games. I like to be challenged. If a game isn't hard, then I really lose interest extremely quickly. So I, I think we can thank Lords of Magic for that. Anyway, number two. Would you consider playing XCOM Enemy Within with Long War mod on your channel in the celebration of XCOM's 2's two nearing, two nearing, nearing release? Uh, no, because Long War takes a fucking eternity to complete, and if I made a Let's Play, I would never be able to finish it. And people are already angry that I'm not finishing my Let's Plays as it is, so I don't think I should be starting a new one, particularly not now. Um, I have considered starting up some XCOM-related content on my channel, but I have way too many Let's Plays going at the same time right now, so I don't think I should be doing that. Uh, so yeah, no. But Long War is a really fucking good mod, though. It's a really good mod. I love the hell out of it. Anyway, three. Do you watch any YouTubers in your free time? If so, who is your favorite YouTuber? I don't really have a favorite YouTuber. I have channels that I watch from time to time, and occasionally I get tired and I, I look for new ones. I used to watch a lot of Total Biscuits back in the day, and also a lot of Jesse Cox and Yogg's casts, but I, I kind of, I don't know, kind of just grew tired of their style, I suppose, and I don't watch them anymore. Um, I, of course, watch a lot of Mage Knights 404 and Marky Joe videos, especially the Fire Emblem-related ones. And... Uh, I also watch a lot of Marbasir. I've, I've been I've linked to Marbasir's channel quite a bit in the past. He plays a lot of Civilization V, and he has a very consistent and elegant playstyle that I really really like. And I also fucking adore his accent; it's so good. Um, but yeah, I, I don't really have a favorite YouTuber. And um, oh yeah, I also watch um, Purge, Purge Dota 2 videos. They're really good. But as I said, I. I my, my taste in YouTube content kind of varies on a weekly basis. Sometimes I really like to watch a lot of videos from one person, and then I kind of get tired of them and I move on to someone else. Anyway, number four. What is your favorite genre of music? Trance. I love trance. I listen to a lot of different music, but trance is the most consistent. Uh, I usually always have some trance on the background whenever I work and I edit videos and shits. So I like to listen to trance. I loved, loved the DJ Tiesto and Ferry Korshtein when I was a teenager. Uh, now I pretty what I do now is that I just go onto YouTube and I just put on a trance mix that lasts for four hours and if I hear a music that I particularly like uh, then I look it up and uh, I see if I can find more of the artists but usually I just have it on in the background as background noise anyway uh, five what is your favorite video game soundtrack Planescape Torments I also talked about that game two weeks ago on the mail segments Planescape Torment has the best music I've ever heard. Uh, I think the... Uh, Matt Morgan, I think, is the composer for that game, if I remember correctly. Matt Morgan or Matt Hoen Hoening? Actually, you know, I, I'm just going to edit it in post-production, his name, because I'm not sure if it... I think it's Matt Morgan, but I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it has absolutely fantastic music, along with the best story I've ever seen. Seriously, go play it. Anyway, with great fanboyism, Jason Fails. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that is it for this week's edition of Mangs Monday. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. If you did, please consider leaving a like and a comment. It really does help out the channel ever so much. Remember that you can send in mails at mangsandzero at gmail.com, which I will read out in the mail segment. Maybe, if they're nice and not too long. Anyway, I hope you guys will be having a wonderful Monday and a wonderful week. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.